Hi, welcome to this video day. It is the uh, 15th of March, it's Sunday. Just going to give our weekly Forex forecast. And in terms of the week ahead, it looks like it's going to be really volatile. I picked out pairs that I think could offer really good risk reward trading opportunities. A lot of charts to look at. We'll go over to the charts in just a moment, but just before we do so, uh, we're obviously only a few months into 2020, but in my view, in the best trading conditions in decades, high volatility really big trends to look into and profit from. Now, in terms of a point that we make regularly, but uh, for new viewers who are unfamiliar with it, uh, never aim for too small a profit in a highly volatile market. A lot of traders aim for 50 or 100 pips. That's way too small when you've got high volatility. You will not make big longer term profits. Aim for 300 pips, preferably 500 pips or more. Now we've got plenty of those sorts of trades on the board. And as we come in to the new week, um, plenty of big trends in motion, which I think are going to continue. And there's some very attractive trend reversal trades shaping up as well. Again, for anyone new to our video, in terms of our trading strategy it is very simple. We are mostly big level traders, uh, big support and resistance levels, using volatility to help us time our trades and also having a directional bias from sentiment. The strategy is extremely simple. If you want to learn more about it, um, you can actually join our member center on the link beneath this video. You can learn all our trading techniques and you can see our daily analysis of 14 Forex pairs, and you can also see our exact levels of entry, stop, and target as well. Now, in terms of charts, I've just updated all the charts in the member center, so I'm going to use the charts from there. So let's go and take a look at it. right Euro USD, our first pair. Now, in terms of the euro, we did see a nice big rally, and uh, we noted it last week, but this rally here, not really people being bullish on the euro. Basically, it was just short carry trades coming out of the market. So short squeeze, we went up to the 114 level, which we noted big institutional level. We felt it'd be hard to get much above or hold above the level. We did poke up to 115, but we sold it back through this outer Bollinger Band here. The um, Bollinger Bands, regular reviews will know when they get really wide, um, you have high volatility. Very often we get outside the band, we'll just sell back within it, so through that open that tail and we get a little bit of downside. It's only 140 odd pips so far. But I think in terms of the euro, limited upside and a lot of downside. If we take out this double bottom here and that 20 day moving average, I think we'll just go straight down to 108, break it, go on to 104.50. Rallies above 112 in my view, selling opportunities. If she goes through a round number, just sell back through the round number. Now, in terms of last week, uh, we did do a video just before the ECB, and we were saying, yeah, we felt the ECB, the central bank, would do more stimulus than the market expected, and they did, and that's why you get some red. Um, I'm surprised the euro didn't sell off a bit more, actually, because for me, the ECB just appeared in a fantasy land, or Christian Lagarde in the press conference. She's talking about returning Eurozone to growth and hitting a 2% inflation target. That's dreamland. Yeah, Eurozone is guaranteed to go in to recession. It'll be long and deep, and they have a huge problem with Italy. Massive government debt, and the banking sector is effectively near enough broke. The government can't bail out the banks. It's going to need taxpayers' money, i.e. Germany, probably to bail out Italy. Uh, so it, it really is serious. I'm not saying... The bailout is guaranteed, but the odds of them having that bailout are really big. Okay, um, but that aside, eurozone, um, just yeah, recession is coming. Sure, the U.S. economy is going to slow as well, but uh, U.S. dollar is the second safe haven, so we favour the U.S.D. Um, before I leave the euro, um, mentioned it last week. If you're a euro bear, trade the proxies or euro correlated currencies because they. Yeah, they did really well last week, um, and they still offer a fantastic uh, risk to reward. We'll come to them a little bit later, but let's go to the next pair, British Pound. Now, we've been generally bullish of the British Pound, and we did 
last week have a trade in that basically went up quite nicely for us. I thought it would carry on. Then we slice down through that 20 day moving average and it's just like a free fall. Um, my view on the uh, pound, um, put it in the notes in the member center, yeah, changed last week. Yeah, I'm not looking for a Brexit decline, um, the whole decline from Brexit to be retraced now. We've moved into a different environment with risk off and that's going to limit the pounds upside against the dollar. Yes, it is very oversold, but I'm only going to swing trade it now. And she's right out and selling the outer Bollinger Band again on high volatility. I'm just going to come back in through the round number and see if she can mount a rally to correct oversold. But um, you know, in terms of trading the pound long term now, um, as a trend following trade, the upside, no. Just going to be swing trading, okay? Pound, though, I still do like against many other uh, currencies, which I'll come to. Now, in terms of next pair, um, AUD. AUD, I've obviously we've been holding this position for a while, from 69.80. And we saw, yeah, I've noted it before, once we came in, we're looking for this 20-day moving average to hold. We always do that in big trends. You know, rallies to kind of fade back to it. Look at that rally there, get a little bit above it, and then down she goes. Uh, it is oversold, but it can sell off more. Yeah, we're almost first target now, 60. Um, second target, 50, yeah. It's 800 odd pips on the board, uh, and there could be more to come. Now, I am mindful we could get uh, a retracement. That would be a selling opportunity. At this moment in time, I think if we did break up, it's this big red that um, should hold that level there, okay? But we might not rally. Uh, just a long way to go on the downside. Australia, we've noted it before, um, just so heavily exposed to China. It's not going to get better there uh, anytime soon. Global trade is slowing. And Australia has had such a, a long run in terms of economic expansion. It's one of the longest of any country in history. It's got a long way to go on the downside. Right. USD, um, JPY, daily chart. Now, last week we were in our short position. It came down really nicely for us. But look at that for a rebound now in terms of this pair we did get a good profit out of it. it's 500 pips but we gave back that amount from the lows but that is just the way it goes when you're following uh big trends you're always going to give profit back uh on turns but what i really like about this pair now is we're right at the 20 day moving average and a big level of resistance which is 108 we just come off the level 107.50 for us i think the rally will be over if we break higher um let's say we break 108 i'll probably sell back through the round number this is a big level to take out it's a big monthly level you can see it there okay i'm still going with my original kind of um targets of 100 which we really nearly reached okay and longer term i think we're going back 280. We've got risk off, which is obviously bullish for the yen. Okay, we had some stock market strength on Friday. Might continue a bit longer, but um, yeah, big picture is for risk off to continue. That means a stronger yen. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that one goes next week. Yen's given back some ground in a number of pairs, so uh, which uh, could be a good opportunity to get into yen long. So we'll come to a few more yen pairs in a moment but let's uh, go to the next pair which is usd cad um a bit like the aussie dollar this one we're up about 700 pips at this moment in time yeah we have a gentle kind of uptrend there then you get the gap then off we go a bit of red on friday we're nearly at first target which is 140 I really think we could get to 146.50 now in terms of the canadian dollar yeah, Canada, they did cut rates again on Friday. They cut rates at their last interest rate meeting. The CAD, you know, very overbought in terms of the majors. And it's not just going down on the USD, in our view. It's going to go down on a number of other currencies, which I'll come to in a bit. But, uh, yeah, we reverse back from 140 to 138. I would just buy off that level, okay? Um, on strength, you know, just look for strength if we do dip a bit more. Um, Canadian dollar's 
going to go a long way down. Uh, yeah, commodity currencies have been bearish off yeah, for months and uh, they've got further to run. Yeah, the way global trade and growth is at the moment, commodity prices, yeah, sure, you're going to get corrections, but um, they're all going down. Crude oil, uh, yeah, obviously is weighed on the can a bit, it's fallen down towards the 30 bucks a barrel mark, but it could easily go to 20, okay? Um, so yeah, sticking with our bullish view, it's been a big move up, more strength to come, right? Let's go and look at some more USD pairs, and then we're going to go uh, look at some crosses that really interest us. Right, uh, we're on a pair which is a minor pair, even if you don't trade it, you should keep an eye on it. It's US dollar Turkish lira, and it's traditionally a very, very volatile pair. We like to trade simple things, and uh, just to give you an example, it wasn't in the news that much because of the virus, but you had escalating tensions between Russia and Turkey. Yeah, it looked like they could even end up you know, fighting each other, and you've got a nice move up. That is a really big move, then they have a bit of a truce. We come back to the 20-day moving average and basically firm up off it. We get back into another long, and up she goes. Now, Turkey has got massive problems, just really big. And why should you watch it, even if you don't trade it? Because if the dollar starts surging up, Turkey has massive loans from European banks. European banks are very, very weak. Obviously, we've got all this turmoil, which has made them weaker. Yeah, the Turkish lira melting down means debt defaults that will reflect on the euro, will help the euro go down. So watch this pair if you don't trade it. Personally, I think we're going way higher. I've got seven. That's a long way up. Um, it's a more minor pair. Um, I like trading it because it's volatile. Uh, but like I said, you should keep an eye on it if you're trading the euro as well. Um, next pair, USD MXN. And even in this period here, it's volatile. Okay, it's another volatile pair. But look at this. Um, it's been one of our big winners. Um, had a couple of trades in long, and uh, the latest one's got some really good profit. I, I think it's going higher. Yeah, despite this massive rise up, you could look on the COT Net Traders report, speculators are still shorting the USD, or still heavily short the USD. Um, this can easily go to 23, 24, 25. It's very volatile. Um, but, um, you yeah, know, in terms of, yeah, volatile pairs always say it, like to trade them. You get a result, good or bad, for yourself pretty quickly. Uh, in terms of this one, it's been a great profit for us. Right, let's have a look at um, a Euro proxy. And I really like the proxies, which I keep saying, sorry. Um, we noted it, uh, that when it came down here, nice wide Bollinger Bands, came below previous support, which was monthly support at 22.50. Come back in long within the band, 21.51.30. And it's one way traffic to the upside. And um, in terms of this one, it's got a long way to go. 26 in our view. I would just buy it on strength. Or if we dip back to this level, key off that level on strength. You can look at the monthly chart. I did it last week. Um, it just is now confirming a big uptrend. Um, the USD, uh, yeah, it has had a big explosive rise, but you see what happened in the USD MXN. Could easily happen in USD Czech Krona. Um, yeah, the Euro proxies, particularly the Eastern European ones, um, they're overvalued, way overvalued against the USD anyway. And with what's going on in Eurozone and global trade, um, global growth, very vulnerable to more weakness. Now, next pair, NZD, USD. This is one that worked really well for us. We sold off, um, which was then, I think, the 68 level. Come down. And we put our stop behind the 20-day moving average. And look at that. We got spiked out. Uh, good profit. But very often when that happens... You know, got through the 20 day moving average, settled just below it, just sell off the level. 20 day moving average, we're looking to provide resistance, and down she goes. So, the second trade at the moment, doing okay, a few hundred pips. Uh, where are we going? I put um 60 on my notes, 
uh, mean to extend that to 50. So uh, a long way to go, <laughs> basically. Yeah, a little bit oversold. The 62 level now should be pretty tough resistance. Yeah, these double trend lines here, 20 days sneaking down behind. Uh, Eddie Valley is a selling opportunity background uh, for New Zealand, very similar to Australia's. Um, but I think the NZD is a bit more overvalued than the Aussie. So it could play catch up with the Aussie on, on the downside, if that makes sense. So it could go down quicker than the Aussie from here. Um, let's have a look at one more USD pair, which is going to be USD. Swedish Krona. Again, it's a proxy trade. Um, again, poke down to 9.30, come back through the previous lows there, and then we're off to the upside. Uh, nice trade. Okay, we had a bit of a wild candle on uh, uh, Friday, but uh, we should go up to break chart highs, go to new multi-year highs. We'll just take 50% out, let 50% run. Uh, so yeah, um, Euro proxies will look pretty good. Um, there's one more proxy actually we'll look at in a moment. Let me just go to some more USD pairs. A lot of people ask me about this pair, uh, US dollar, Singapore dollar. And we've had some decent luck with this. Uh, caught that nice big move up. She comes down. And then we can get back in 138.60. And then she's off the upside. There is a lot of upside in this pair. Um, 145, 150 could even get to 160. Singapore dollar is pretty overvalued and it's really ex exposed to global trade. I think it's the second most um, exposed to global trade in terms of its economy. It is quite a slow moving pair, but um, if you're a long term position trader and you want you know, decent gains, um, you know, offers a really good risk to reward trade. So more upside in this pair. Uh, what have we got next? Ah, here's uh, USD pair, another Euro proxy. And again, level of support goes through it outside the outer Bollinger Band, comes back within, we can get long. It's not quite as aggressive as the CZK um, up move, but uh, pretty aggressive. Uh, don't see much downside. We should run on, take out chart highs, go to 420. I think a big bull move has been confirmed. We've got any more USD pairs we can look at? Ah, we'll look at USD. Czar. This is a bit similar to the MXN. Despite the dollar's big move up, um, speculators are still pretty short. More upside ahead. Um, this is a really big move. Um, yeah, not exotic, of course, but uh, yeah, fast moving. Uh, good risk to reward. Right, Euro JPY, and we noticed it yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last week, really choppy price action, big reds and blues all over the place. And uh, last week uh, we were very bearish and we thought we would see continuation to the downside. But this big blue took us out on stop on Friday. You can see we managed to get just 50 pips, gave back several hundred. But that's the way it is, as I said, when you're trading big trends. But where we are now, it's a very attractive sell at a round number to sell off the round number or off the 121 level. This one's got big downside potential. Obviously we're bearish for the zone, very bearish. I think we'll go to 110 and then we'll go down to 100, okay? Spiked up in the short term, but uh, I think that spike is a selling opportunity. Now in terms of another pair that uh, is interesting, and this is interesting in terms of yeah, when you've got a big directional view and you get a big price spike against you, but your directional view has not changed, yeah, sell the spike. We saw it in NZD, USD. This is AUD, CAD. And our view has been for a while of the commodity currencies, bearish of them all, but the CAD is going to be the strongest going forward, uh, longer term. And, uh, yeah, we sold um, the AUD on the CAD, and it did go down quite nicely for us, and then we get stopped out as we surge higher. But this is just an aberration candle. You're going to get these yeah, real, really big spikes in the type of markets that we've got at the moment. Our view of the CAD being stronger going forward, not changed. Sell back through the body, and she tumbles 400 pips. Um, we've taken half of this trade away now, 
bit oversold outside the Zadra Bollinger Band. But 87 should hold rallies going down longer term. 280. So I think, yeah, going fresh, probably sell a rally if you're interested in this pair. Right, let's uh, go and look at um, some yen crosses. This is uh, AUD uh, JPY. We've been following this one down literally from the recent highs. Kind of a gentle decline there. Then the big decline. Um, yes, it's about 900 or pips, isn't it? No, sorry, it's 800. But is there more to come? Yeah. 60, then 50. Now, obviously, there is going to be counter trend action, but I've got a feeling get above 68, you can sell back through the number into that resistance level. If she doesn't rally, you can sell through 66. Yeah, this is a big trend in motion. I don't think it's turning around any time soon. Of course, you will get the inevitable, yeah, big corrective spike, but um, that'll be a selling opportunity. Uh, just so bullish of the JPY uh, longer term on the commodity currencies. One that's bounced nicely is this one, actually. This is CAD JPY. That's a big spike up. That, for us, is a sell. Come right into a round number, just above it. Come off the level back through the round number. It's a sell or into this second level resistance. Um, CAD, uh, yeah, that rally for us is a selling opportunity. Uh, what have we got next? Let's have a look at some GBP pairs. Um, this one is running okay for us, but obviously like all pairs, it's really spiky action. Come up, come back to support. If you were bullish of the GBP, I would just come in through the two level. You know, if we break back above two, significant round number will go off the upside, 205 then 215. Um, so I view, yeah, the dip as a buying opportunity effect. If you just want to see some strength, if we did follow through to the 20 day moving average, you could key off that. One pair I got stopped out of was this one. Um, GP NZD uh, took her on the rally above 205 here. She slumps back. <laughs> okay. Um, major level of support for us. You know, so basically down at the 202 level. Just buy back 204.20 in our view. Um, if we were to run on, we'd reset entry. You know, the, the pound um, is much safer than the commodity currencies going forward. I just view that dip as a buying opportunity. Now let's go to um, another GB pair. And this is the pair last week that did surprise me. Uh, we had a great trade off the lows here in support. Massive move up. We had the good sense to take 50% of our trade away on this one, which was in, in a couple of other pairs or a few other pairs. And she comes back and she comes through 175 and we put our stop behind. And I thought she'd buy back through the level when she was down. She didn't really get back through the level, just bang. Big, big, exaggerated move. Uh, CAD really overbought. Um, we will go along with a very aggressive entry. We're just going to play the round numbers. Um, 169.50, we'll go 170.20. If we fall down lower, I'll reset the entry. Um, the moment I've got, if we do get triggered long, I've got the stop outside that outer Bollinger Band behind this level, which is also a monthly level. 180, then 190. So um, we shall see, but uh, really like the look of this pair. Let's just finish off uh, with a couple more, uh, what of which, where do we want to go? There's some USD pairs, let's go past them. Uh, NZD, JPY. Again, another commodity currency. Just not much upside in this one either. In our view, we're coming into resistance. 65, 60, just sell back through those two bodies. Not much upside at all. Got 60 as my downside target. I'm going to extend that to 50. Okay, uh, last pair we'll look at NZD CAD. This is very similar to AED CAD, perhaps not such an aggressive move. Look at that. When I say not such an aggressive move, I mean on the downside, but look at that candle on the upside. Massive 83 to 87, 400 pips in what is not normally a very volatile pair. 
again uh, we will just basically look for the spike to fade we come in a little bit later on this one through the round number she comes down quite nicely I'm now looking for a break of, of chart lows um, so in terms of the pairs so there's plenty of pairs uh, to look at this week you know trading conditions at the moment with this high volatility um, you know it, it's been a fantastic few months and the only kind of thing that's a bit disappointing so to speak is just why we've got this high volatility you know with the virus and you know global growth global trade you know big problems global recession we could see one coming um it's not nice times really um but as forex traders you know we're trading the markets we can protect ourselves um and make money and uh, over the last few months it has been a really good trading period i've got the feeling the volatility is just going to stay high for a good while yet now in terms of pairs um i think i've covered all that i need to if i've missed a few out there's still plenty of pairs i've done so hopefully you find some of the trade setups useful that is the video for today thank you very much for watching me as per usual take care have a good day